On Broken Silicon 210 this week, one of the main stories was all about Navi 32 and RX 7800 XT rumors, despite me openly saying that I'm not so sure we should assume the 7800 XT even uses Navi 32. Really, the discussion ended up turning into deciphering why there might be conflicting rumors out there about AIBs registering for the 7800 XT. Well, pictures emerge of Navi 32, despite a W7800 being out there right now that would probably be the perfect specs for a 7800 XT. I mean, what is going on? Why do so many people People online not seem to agree about what AMD's mid-range RDNA 83 graphics cards are going to look like. And today, I actually have pictures of a product that nobody else seems to know about right now that kind of makes sense of what's going on and why there is so much confusion. But before I get to those pictures and some quotes from some of my sources, I just want to logically lay out why I think, even though I can't ever promise you AMD will be smart about their decision making, but why I think it wouldn't be smart for AMD to use Navi 32 for a 7800 XT. And really it all centers around the unfortunate fact that six months after RDNA 3 has launched, all the benchmarks and data out there suggest that RDNA 3's compute units, you know, per compute unit, are really only about 10 to 25% better than RDNA 2. And with that knowledge then, Navi 32, guys, it only goes up to 60 compute units. So at best, you're looking at a Navi 32 product that if they pushed it really hard, might come close to a 6900 XT, but in reality, it's probably going to be closer to a 6800 XT in performance before you talk about ray tracing. And I'm sorry, like launching Navi 32 as a 7800 XT that's not really much stronger than a 6800 XT doesn't make much sense. That product to me would make much more sense as a 7800 16 gigabyte. No XT for less than 600 as, you know, just a bridge between the high end and the low end of RDNA 3. Heck, I'm going to be honest, I don't even know if AMD needs a 7800 XT this generation. They have the 24 gigabyte XTX, they have the 20 gigabyte 7900 XT, and then at the bottom, they have a 7600. There's no 7600 XT in sight. And that's because they don't see a point in it. They've got one 8 gigabyte cheap card at the bottom. I don't see why they couldn't just launch a 7800 16 gig for 500 to 550 and like a 7700 XT 12 or 16 gig for 400 to 450 and then go home. Like, why do you need more than like five cards in this lineup when there's so much oversupply of last gen filling in all of those other gaps? The answer is that you don't. Not until Navi 21 and Navi 22 from last gen sell through and are off the market, everyone's bought it up, and then, then it would make sense for AMD to launch Navi 32, and maybe a budget version of Navi 31, should they be able to find a way to launch that version much cheaper than people expect. And as it turns out, it looks like they can, everybody. And I want to put these quotes on screen and get to the leak now, because it's pretty exciting, actually, the repercussions of some of what I know. So, one of my sources I talked to said that a year ago, AMD told this AIB that they should expect a 70 CU 7800 XT, a 60 CU 7800, and a 48 CU 7700 XT to launch at some point in quarter two or three of this year. But at this point, quarter two is almost over, and so they're not sure AMD even knows what they want to do anymore although they think they're going to contact them with an updated plan soon because I am told or that they know that Navi 21 stock is nearly 100% sold through. Can't say that's true of every AIB, but at least half of the AIBs I've talked to say they're basically done with Navi 21 products. It's sold through, no new ones to ship out, so they expect AMD to update them soon. Now, another AIB told me that Navi 32, though, is tipped off to them so far to launch in quarter three, and that the RX 7800 16GB at a minimum should use it along with some 7700 XT, although they're not really sure what's going on with a 7800 XT, or possibly something that might just be called a 7900 and what that's going to use. Now, another source tells me that they are currently planning 260 watt 16 gigabyte cards and a 240 watt 12 gigabyte Navi 32 card for launch in September. So at a minimum, everybody, when I look at quarter three, when I look at September, I think it's starting to point to one thing here. 
some of these cards are going to come out in September, although they're not really sure how AMD is going to name them yet because they're probably waiting to see how street pricing pans out over one more month before they really decide what to do. But a fourth source told me something fascinating. I was told that there have been plans for a 70 CU 16 gigabyte 7800 XT or 7900, whatever AMD decides to call it, but that it doesn't make any sense to launch until Navi 21 sells through, although it's almost done. And that they also, though, kind of needed to wait for 21 to sell through anyways, because 70 CUs is very cut down for Navi 31. They have been putting aside, supposedly, the bottom, bottom, bottom yields of Navi 31 for some 7900 non-XT or 7800 XT, and they're hoping to accumulate enough by the time Navi 21 is sold out. Oh, and also, apparently the 70CU model can use a 40mm by 40mm Navi 32 size package. No. I'm not kidding. Although the Navi 32 package is limited to just four MCDs, a 256-bit bus, apparently there's a version of it that AMD made that can fit the full Navi 31 GCD, meaning they can make something with way more CUs than you would expect, a lot smaller than you would expect, and save a ton of cost on bottom yields of Navi 31. And there are a ton of repercussions for what types of products this means AMD can make this year. And also, I have pictures proving this compact variant of Navi 31 exists out there that I'm going to leak right now. But first, an ad from a sponsor. For the first half of this year, have you felt like a dog chasing its tail as you scour CD websites and eBay to find any place you can get reasonably priced Microsoft products? Well, you don't need to do that anymore. Just go to cdkeyoffer.com, the best place to get Microsoft operating systems, office products, select games, and even some gaming hardware peripherals for reasonable prices and you know they're always doing special promotions right now in fact they are doing their mid-year sales event that you're not gonna want to miss so whether you're looking for steam ea uplay or playstation keys or of course microsoft products or gaming peripherals support moore's law is dead by using the offer code broken silicon for 25 percent off all microsoft products and die shrink for three percent off everything else on the website support moore's laws dead by supporting one of our best long-term sponsors cdkeyoffer.com today so that last quote from the fourth source on screen here that was a big bombshell for several reasons First of all, it explains why AMD might actually be able to afford launching a 70 compute unit 7800 XT for possibly $600. The reason is, is this Navi 31 compact edition would fit into the same AIB designs for the Navi 32, and those are cheaper boards, cheaper packaging. Uh, that's the brilliance of RDNA 3. The cost of making a 7800 XT, in other words, might just be almost the same as Navi 32 because all of the other components are the same, except there's that extra like $20 for a little more five nanometer silicon. But if this is just using like 5% of the Navi 31 GCD yields that just don't pass validation as a 7900 XT, then it's really not costing them anything extra. And it's allowing them to launch a product that bridges between 60 and 84 CUs that they wouldn't be able to launch if these were monolithic designs. Second, and most excitingly in my opinion, this also means that AMD can technically launch a 4090 laptop competitor. That's right. Think about it. Navi 31's a bit too big and power hungry to fit into laptops, but if they can fit a Navi 31 GCD into this 40 by 40 package, that means they could take the best bins of 96 CUs for low voltage, put it in there with just four MCDs, and maybe use 24 gigabit per second memory, which would bring the bandwidth of four MCDs to the same as a 7900 XT on desktop right now. And then if they just, you know, limit it to a 150 to 200 watt TDP, well, there you go. They could almost bring exactly 7900 XT performance to laptops, which would compete with the 4090 laptops. Because remember, those 4090 laptops, they're really using underclocked 4080s, which means the performance would be pretty similar to a 7900 XT. And if that sounds fantastical to you, 
uh, either that AMD can fit a Navi 31 GCD into a 32 package or that they can make some 7900 MXC to compete with the 4090 laptop GPUs. Let me just dispel the doubt right now and stop dancing around it. Let me put this on screen. Here it is, a picture and proof of a 40 by 40 Navi 32 package holding a Navi 31 GCD and actually six MCDs, which, yeah, let me leave this on screen and point out some details about this product and clarify a few things. The first thing is that I need to tell you guys that AIBs have supposedly had this type of thing for months now, and it was sent to them by AMD so that they could do testing for Navi 32 before Navi 32 is even ready to be sent to them. AMD planned for Navi 32 packages to be able to hold a Navi 31 GCD, and so they sent that to them before 32 is even ready in addition to, of course, letting them thermal test for a 7800 XT as well for some of these samples. Now, second of all, I am also told that final versions of this should be missing two of those MCDs. I know this shows six MCDs on here, but I'm told the final variant will have four. And that brings me to number three here. I am told that this can't even use six MCDs, that this thing is two of them disabled, and that even if you tried to use six, the connections aren't there in the Navi 32 package to leverage a 384-bit bus. They can only use up to 256-bit, up to four MCDs, and so while this looks insane, some mobility 384-bit graphics card, it can't be 384-bit. It just looks like it for this test sample, which brings me to really point number four here. I am unfortunately, though, told that while AMD has a design for a 16 gigabyte 96 CU 7900 MXT out there, that right now it doesn't sound like it's coming out anytime soon and it may never launch. And that's because so far, no OEM has bit on this design to put into an actual laptop. Now that's unfortunate because 4090 laptops are incredibly overpriced right now. And I'm sure some people would love the option of buying a $2,000 7900 MXT laptop instead of buying a $4,000 4090 laptop. But the fact of the matter is, OEMs tell me that what they have in their testing is a product that, yes, can match 4090 laptop performance, but only really does so above 150 watts, while the 4090 laptops are using a little below 150. So it isn't as efficient as them. Even if it's not as efficient as them, they just want the best, and I guess OEMs are hell-bent on having the most thin laptop designs ever, even for a graphics card that probably should be using 150 watts anyway. So all of that is to say, can AMD launch a 7900 MXT that competes with a 4090 laptop? Yes, they can. But... No one's planning one right now, and so if it does happen, it's probably going to be later in the year, and it may never come out anyways. But at a minimum, what this tells you is AMD has options for future laptop products in the high end, and they also can launch a 70CU 7800 XT graphics card that will have higher margins than you'd expect because it's using the same packaging as Navi 32 on the same boards. AIBs don't need to design some overbuilt thing for these bad yields. It actually wouldn't cost that much more to make than something that uses Navi 32. And that is all of the information, pictures, and leaks that I have for you in this video. Unfortunately, this video isn't going to end with me saying the 7800 XT costs this much, launches this day, and has these exact specs because I honestly don't think AMD's made that decision yet. And if they have... They haven't really told anyone and set it in motion. You know, there's some registers for a 7800 XT, so I think there probably will be one. But what that will be, there's two options for a 16 gigabyte card. And well, so let me get into concluding, or should I say summarizing, what I can conclude today. Number one, a 70CU Navi 31 gaming, not just professional card, is out there designed and possible for AMD to launch at a lower price than most people are expecting because it can use the Navi 32 package, meaning it's not that much more expensive to make than Navi 32 if you have the yields and the desire to do that. But yeah, that's point number two here. AMD doesn't have a ton of 70 CU yields. So they probably are trying to get enough for a launch. And even if they do launch it, 
it's also probably to get rid of some 7900 XT yields. They never feel like they're going to be able to sell for over $700. The 7900 XT did not sell as well as AMD expected. A large reason AMD would launch this 70 CU Navi 32 package product is to get rid of excess GCDs from Navi 31 that they don't think they'll ever be able to sell, which means, you know, point number three, I don't think AMD is ultimately going to have that many 7800 XTs in all regions if it does use 70 CU. I think even if they do decide to launch this thing over here and then, you know, the 60 CU 7800 over there, long term, the main 16 gigabyte RDNA 3 product they're going to supply in high volume will probably be the top Navi 32 variant. And, well, point number four, I can't confirm what they're going to name it. For all I know, there will be some 7800 XT based on Navi 32 clocked past 3 gigahertz that really isn't any stronger than last gen 6800 XT. I think that'd be stupid, but they might do that. And then they might have a 7900 no XT Navi 31 variant over there and maybe just launch to some regions. That's what some people suggest might happen. Or they might call these things, you know, whatever they want. I don't believe the naming is confirmed yet. All I know is that that Navi 31 70 CU thing for gaming is out there and it costs less to make than people expect. And that Navi 32 is probably going to launch in September. And so I guess what I'm hoping happens, though, if you ask me what is possible for AMD to do, and what I hope they do, is that they have a 70 CU 7800 XT that trades blows with a 6950 XT and it costs 600 I think that would humiliate the 4070. I think that would be a pretty good product slotting in once they've gotten rid of last-gen high-end cards. And below that, I hope they have a 500 to 550 7800 that outperforms a 6800 XT, I think, especially if it was closer to 500, like 530. It would make the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte a joke, and it would make bargain 4070s also not look like a good option meaning there'd be a lot of competition there bringing prices down more over time for everybody and then also any 48 cu 7700 xt i hope it's 450 and i hope they give it 16 gigabytes so far it sounds like they're going to give it 12 gigabytes but even if they do give it 12 gigabytes yeah, this is something that's going to perform like an rx 6800 and that means it'll destroy the 4060 ti and performance without making you spend 500 dollars to get enough vram and uh yeah i guess that's all i have to say for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe. Share the videos with your friends. Ring the bell button so you're actually notified when I put out new content if you are subscribed. According to YouTube, half of you aren't subscribed. So really trying to help to get those numbers up even more this month. It really helps the channel a lot. But if you want to help the channel, you can support our sponsors or best of yet, support Moore's Law is Dead on Patreon. We have ad-free broken silicons that come out early we have die shrink videos that if you enjoy this type of content is out there you know every other week there's a new one just for the two dollar tiers and up with no ads it's there if you like this content there's so much there for you and of course you can ask guest questions uh, we have sadly it's bradley coming on to talk about all of the recent vr stuff that's going on right now you'll be able to ask him questions if you just pay two dollars a month there's so much content out there if you have two or four or whatever amount of money a month it's really not that much and we really do rely on our patrons so much but for everybody else no matter what thank you for watching